Hi, Leather Rock here. Welcome to my channel. I'm trying not to be too noisy because I'm at the West Side Library live from Washington, D.C. Um, I want to make sure to be able to film today so that I have something to post for Tuesday, my next posting day. Um, I, as you probably know by now, I am using a Chromebook computer and so far the only thing I heard that you can edit on, there is some program, I don't even remember the name of it. I didn't, I don't even think I wrote it down before I left New Jersey to come here. But until I familiarize myself with that program, I'm not going to be able to edit pieces of footage together. So I'm going to have to do a full run through in order to make a video. So today I just want to give you some observations I have about Washington, D.C. and also tell you kind of some of the things that I've been doing since I've been here. And I've been here since Friday early afternoon. So one thing when you're walking around Washington, D.C., there are lots of circles. The city seems to be on a grid, but also has diagonals. And if, say, you are going from a circle and somebody tells you to follow a certain street, you got to realize that every street intersecting a circle has technically two streets. So you may be on the right street, but you may very well be going on the wrong direction. And that's just what happened to me. My hair looks wet to you. It is. It's raining and quite well, but not thunder and lightning. So um, my phobia about lightning is not relevant to this. I did have to put my hair under my hat to try to keep it from getting wetter than it is. Of course, I didn't bring an umbrella because I thought that an umbrella that I usually carry to keep the sun off of me, but because wind and umbrellas can make a person as lightweight as me go airborne and the last thing I want to do is drop this computer because I've already lost two computers two mishaps in Washington DC and I'll be damned if I'm gonna lose this one even though if I am gonna lose a piece of equipment I just assume it be a cheap Chromebook rather than thousands of dollars worth of machinery which is usually what happens when computers break here in town so yeah when you're walking around do be sure to always look at the streets. Another, look for the street signs. Another thing I noticed that you think you can be on a certain street, but streets have a way of veering off and all of a sudden you'll be on some street that's perpendicular to the street that you had been on. And it's real easy to get lost that way. And if you don't pay attention to the street signs, you may find yourself not only on a street you don't expect, but you can be several blocks off of where you're supposed to be and then you're going to have to orient yourself and you'll waste a lot of time that way and if it's raining you're going to get wet another thing people do jaywalk here but it really is a good idea to wait at the light act like you live in los angeles or someplace where you get jaywalking tickets now i haven't been here long enough to know if they actually ticket you for jaywalking but it really is best to wait at the light one thing I really like about Washington, D.C. is while you're waiting for the light and when the light crosses for you, then you got your white walking man sign and they actually have a countdown. It tells you how many seconds you have to cross the street. And I wish more cities had that available so that you knew just how much time you had to cross. If you watch my channel enough or if you've known me, you know that I used to live in Los Angeles and in San Francisco and I fully intend to make my way back there when I can. But one of the things about living in Los Angeles is the police can and do to get you for jaywalking. So for that reason, I'm really not a jaywalker no matter what city I'm in. The last thing I want to do is get in the habit of jaywalking and then the next thing you know I find myself in city the tickets and the next thing you know you get a ticket. And at least in Los Angeles, if you don't pay your tickets in a month, they double. So it's really best to just wait at the light for the walking person sign. And, uh, and there's often a beeping sound that you hear too. At first it sounds like it might be coming from people's personal electronics or something, but I think it's to help people with visual impairments so they can cross the street safely. Another observation I have about Washington, D.C. is there's an awful lot of gas leaks. And I, for the life of me, don't understand why the people who live here don't pick up a phone and call and report them, especially if it's in their own neighborhoods. I don't know about you guys, but I'm scared of natural gas. And I think any place that can be earthquake prone, and really earthquakes can happen any place. If a gas mean ruptures, 
there's explosions and fires and all that stuff, and nobody wants that. So I really wish that we would make our way away from, it's not that I'm anti-fossil fuel, I'm not. I'm not an environmental Nazi or something, even though I do care about the environment. But I'm a safety person kind of person, and I just think that using gas and having gas pipes and everything is really dangerous. And I've seen beautiful apartment buildings that actually have gas lamps at the uh, entrance to their houses. And I think that is just asking for a problem if you have an earthquake. And we have had earthquakes here uh, in, I think, I don't remember if it was 2011 or 2012, there was an earthquake that was centered, uh, epicenter was a little bit underground of Washington, D.C. And my mother and I felt it in Atlantic City. It happened on a Tuesday and it was her day off of work. And we were both in the apartment and where at the time the apartment building shook a lot anyway because where it is I think the ground is hollow so whenever a truck would cross the street the house would shake a little but uh, so when the earthquake happened of course it was shaking but it was a different kind of shake it was a shake from deep underground it felt like and instead of just shaking temporarily like when a truck passes by it kept on shaking it was rocking and my mother was truly scared and she's not a kind of person to show her emotion very much so of course she asked me if that was an earthquake and I had to think about it and I said yeah I think so and if anybody would know what earthquakes feel like it would be somebody that's lived in California I've been in earthquakes in Los Angeles I've been in earthquakes in San Francisco but mostly in Los Angeles so and I've been in some lighter ones and I've been in some heavier ones and the lightest ones I wasn't necessarily scared but the heaviest ones I was a little bit trepidatious and then after wrath in the aftermath of my earthquakes I was fascinated by them I even remember my very first earthquake in Hollywood which was back in 1987 October of 1987 um, I was so fascinated by what I had just experienced because I had been there not quite a full year when I had my first earthquake. And so I went outside with my notebook and I started interviewing just random people about where they were and what they were doing. And I wrote this all down in a journal that I was keeping at the time. I've been keeping journals and diaries. Well, I, was, I started my first diary when I was actually an eight-year-old little girl. But I became more of a consistent journal, journaler when I was my later high school years. And although there are, sometimes I confine my writing to only when life gets interesting, but I feel really guilty about that. And I try to be much more consistent with my writing now. Even if I forget for a week or two, either because, and I don't have any good excuse for this. Sometimes I even misplace my notebook, and then when I finally find it, then I have to go and try to reconstruct what I did. And calendars, of course, come in very handy for this. So, and I, I, I recommend anybody, journaling is a very valuable tool for helping you to get to know yourself and also for documenting your life. I think my journals are some of my most precious possessions because they prove the life that I've lived and I haven't had a particularly boring life. It's been exciting even though I'm not the most prosperous people person. So Washington DC has lots of gas leaks and I noticed a lot of rats but I've never seen a single feral cat yet. I'd like to know where all the felines are. One thing I noticed when I look at the apartment buildings. I'm passing by a lot of amazing architecture and a lot of beautiful, I'm assuming older buildings, maybe pre-war era buildings. Um, and in addition to the fact that their rents seem to be through the roof ridiculous, I noticed some of them, in addition to whatever the rent and utilities, they charge you extra if you have a dog and extra if you have a cat. Uh, my friend's place where he lives, they would charge him $35 a month if he had a cat and they would charge him fifty dollars a month extra if he had a dog and I think when apartments either do not allow pets or when they're or when they have surcharges like that I think that really uh, inhibits people from having pets and considering the pet overpopulation and the animals 
by the millions that get killed in shelters every year. Anything that discourages people from keeping animals or makes the cost too prohibitive, that just results in more animals' deaths. And when there are places, so many places that don't allow pets and people move and they seem to feel that the only place they can find are places that don't allow pets, more often than not, people just drop off their animals to shelters, even fully well knowing that there's a good chance, more, more than not, that their animal is going to be put to death. And how anybody could live with themselves doing that or give excuses saying, oh, my child's allergic or I got a new boyfriend or girlfriend and they're allergic. And so they give up their animal that they've had for 10 years or more or whatever. And how you could live with yourself doing that. I don't think that's right any more than it's right just deciding to get rid of your child and saying, you know, if my kid, he's 10 and he's bad, he won't stop saying the F words. You know what, I'm just going to put him out in the street and there's a good chance he may die or get picked up by a pedophile or something. But you know what, I can't deal with him anymore. This isn't convenient, so I'm just going to get rid of my child. I don't think that's morally right. So why, why we as American society think it's okay to do to our animals, I don't understand. So getting back to Washington, D.C., one of the things that's groovy, I don't know about all the libraries, but I do know about this West Side Library. It's open seven days a week. I think that is amazing. And this particular library branch is open from, at least today, it's open from 9.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. That's amazing. I wish I, the same could be said for libraries in Atlantic City. This library is so high-tech, so modern. It looks like it is millions and millions of dollars. It's, it's amazing. Even though there is some conversation going on at the library, people aren't on top of each other, so it doesn't really get on your nerves. I'm sitting at a table that has plenty of electrical outlets. You, there are three empty seats around me. As you can see, I'm talking on this video and I'm not bothering anybody. I deliberately, of course, chose a place to sit where I would be as unobtrusive as possible so that I could make a stealth video here. And this is the second YouTube video I've made in this library, by the way. A few months ago, I was here. I was introduced to this library. I made a video also. And so I think it's really groovy that I'm able to do this. And I do have the light turned off on my monitor so that it doesn't attract the attention of people. Another observation I'm going to make, and this is going to involve what I did today. I, as of my filming this right now, it is 11.17 in the morning. I got up extra early this morning because I had a chance to go to a friend of Bill W. meeting, meeting if you know what that is. I haven't been to a meeting like that in probably 10 years. I think Hollywood was the last time I went to, and, and I'm referring to AA. Now, it was really good for me to go, not only because I am committed to being sober and I'm deathly afraid of touching alcohol because I know that it's poison for me and I know all the problems that it caused me, but one of the things that I, the observations that I made about this particular meeting, after the meeting was over, a very nice man came up to me and I was wearing my MAGA hat and I was wearing, okay, this is the shirt I'm wearing, which is a pot leaf shirt. And obviously, I didn't want to offend anybody by the pot leaf. So I stuck a big Trump inauguration pin on it to hide the pot leaf. And I'm also wearing pot socks, but I turned the part of it that goes up the leg down to cover the leaves as much as possible because I wanted to show my respect. So when the gentleman told me that they kind of were not about political expression, and first of all, I wasn't talking politics. I would have no reason to go and talk about, oh, hi, my name is Leather, not only am I an alcoholic, but I am a Trump supporter or I'm a, Dem a Republican or whatever. I wouldn't think to do that. I wouldn't think to bring it up any more than I would think to point out my pentagram and flash it in people's faces, even though there's all this God talk, which is one of the things about AA meetings that kind of I have mixed feelings about because I think I veer somewhere between atheist and agnostic, but closer to atheist. And so whenever people talk about God, I end up having this dialogue in my head to the, this imaginary person. And I would rather be in the moment and not be 
having a silent conversation in my head. I want to be present. I want to be paying attention to what's going on around me. I want I want to pay attention, you know. So I took my MAGA hat off. I couldn't very well take the pin off the middle of my shirt because I didn't think flashing the pot leaf would be appropriate. So, okay, MAGA hats are frowned upon in Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. I didn't know that. So if you're deplorable and you're watching this, Maybe don't wear your MAGA hat to a friend of Bill W. meeting because somebody may set you aside and talk to you about that. And I didn't know that. I didn't think that. I mean, I know if you're going to vote, you're not supposed to wear electioneering materials. But I didn't know if you can't wear a MAGA hat to a 12-step meeting, does that mean that you can't wear a, a non-theist symbol? Um, would wearing a pentagram seem to be anti-God? Um, I'm sure that there are people who are in the program who are not necessarily believing in the God that they say, okay, higher power, or God as you understand him, or whatever. And I also know that nowadays they have alternatives to AA that are less theist, but I couldn't tell you what they are offhand, and I'm sure that because they are much less commonplace than AA, I'm sure they're harder to find, especially if you aren't in a major metropolitan area, such as Washington, D.C. That said, the meeting that I went to this morning was really groovy. I felt great energies there. There was nothing intimidating or offensive about it at all. The coffee was great. Not that I should care about such things, but it is true. Um... Now I think I want to talk to you about what I've done so far since I've been here. Since I do have some footage, but I don't know how I can possibly piece it together. And so maybe, and a lot of the footage that I took, I think is going to be useless anyway. And I'll tell you some of the reasons why. Well, first of all, I also did some filming on the bus talking about what my experience was on a trip so far, but again, because I'm not able to add the footage all together until I have access to whatever that program is. And I don't, I never know exactly how much time I have on the internet each day when I'm here, because sometimes I'm in places like Starbucks or even some of the parks have free Wi-Fi. but of course the parks, I probably am not going to have something to plug in. And this battery does drain on me. And sometimes even when I'm filming. So I really would prefer to be at an electrical outlet also with my Wi-Fi. So um, I did some filming while I was on the bus on the way. There was free Wi-Fi on the Greyhound bus. That's, But I found out not all Greyhound buses have Wi-Fi. My friends who live here who were visiting my town said that there was no Wi-Fi on their buses. And I felt bad for them because that was one thing that I thought was a really big draw about Greyhound, having Wi-Fi and an electrical outlet that you can plug in whatever your device is and you can at least use the social media to let your friends who you're coming to visit know that you're in town since, believe it or not, not every human being in America has a cell phone. I sure as hell don't. Um, sat let's see, Saturday was the main day uh, the events that I went to, the first event was a march from Trump International Hotel on the sidewalk, but not in the street. We marched toward the White House, and then after that, we marched from the White House area to 12th and Madison on the National Mall, which is roughly halfway between the Washington Monument and the Capitol, maybe a little bit closer to the Washington Monument. It was really surreal in a way and I felt a little sad because one of the things that happened while I was hanging out in front of Trump International Hotel with a, a group of women from Oregon Women for Trump but also people that were not from Oregon, some locals I imagine. Uh, I met a um, damn baby. I, I met a man from Scotland and his wife that were, uh, I don't know if they, they immigrated here and they were actually able to vote here, what their story was, but the guy loved Trump and he loved America and he just thought this was such a great country. And I love meeting people like that because it makes me appreciate 
being an American even more, hearing people that are from other places that have observed firsthand the difference in freedoms in even European nations. And they come here and they see how free we are here and they love America and they love our president and they love our way of life. And people like that just are beautiful to me. And plus, I really love talking to Europeans. It makes me feel, it, well, he, I have a little tiny bit of Scottish blood in me. So people that are feel, seem more like my heritage, it's very comforting to me. Not that I have problems with people of different cultures. I don't, unless they have a problem with me, then of course all bets are off. But to see people that I feel that I can relate to is like a breath of fresh air. And it's certainly a welcome change of pace from where I live, where I don't culturally relate to most people at all. There are so many people that don't speak my language, certainly don't look like me, certainly don't act civilized. And I really love to get out of town to be in other more welcoming environments. It just... I don't want to call this a vacation, but I will call this, it's almost like therapy. When I go to Washington, D.C., it really, it renews my spirit. It's kind of the way I used to feel when I would go to New York City, but I really believe I, I enjoy Washington, D.C. better than I like New York City, because first of all, New York City is a lot more expensive. New York City, I have friends who live and work there, and as much as I appreciate my friends, I always get the feeling that they are too busy to spend to have time with me because they're always working I don't enjoy calling them on the phone because invariably they have cell phones and they're walking out and about and if I'm talking on the phone with somebody I'm giving them my full attention and I expect them to be able to give their full attention to me and if you're walking and making sure that you don't get hit by a car when you step off the curb or if you're on a subway and you have or a bus and you have to pay attention to your street you can't give me your full attention when we're on the phone because you have to be aware of your surroundings and that's the thing with people who have cell phones you don't know where they are and they're not it's like not like when you could just count that a person is home and you're sitting in your house and they're sitting in their house so they can give you they can pay attention to you and that's what I don't like about calling people who have cell phones and I really don't like calling people on phones period I never felt really comfortable on the telephone uh, so when we were in the uh, mall area, and there are some free Wi-Fi there also, but not all, not very many uh, plug-in places. They are yellow jackets, and you got to watch out for yellow jackets because unlike bees, they sting you. It doesn't kill them, and they can sting you just because they're sons of bitches. Whereas bees usually wouldn't won't sting you unless they're provoked. Uh, I'm not, of course, talking about Africanized honeybees. They're just badasses and you want to avoid them at all costs. But honeybees, of course, we love our bees because they pollinate our crops. If the bees die, we probably won't have much in the way of food and human civilization could die out. So please beware of your bees. One of the, I'm really bummed out that a lot of the footage I can't use, it, you know, one of the, a lot of the footage I can't use because they played music in the uh, segments that I was trying to film. And if you get caught with music, you will get a copyright strike. And for one of the things that I was filming, they played music at least twice. And I don't have any editing skills. I just finally had learned how to edit pieces of footage together on a Windows 10 machine. I got to the point where I could storyboard like A, B, C, D, E all together. But as far as taking certain parts of a video out, splicing that together, then splicing all other pieces of video footage together, that's beyond my capabilities. So I don't know how to take out the songs. And if there's music in the background, I don't know how to take the music out of the background and leave all the other sounds together, I, if, if that's even possible. I don't know how to do it, and I sure as hell don't feel like taking such advanced training that I would feel like I would need a college degree just to understand it. It's not some of this tech just makes me feel like I'm. I'm going to say something very controversial and politically incorrect. It makes me feel like a mongoloid idiot. 
okay? Of course, now you're not supposed to say that term, but I don't have time for politically correct bullshit. I just rather, and of course, you can't, shouldn't say Down syndrome either because it sounds like you're insulting people with developmental disabilities. And I have no reason to make anybody feel bad about themselves for things they can't control. God only knows with all the drugs I used to do in a day, I'm probably brain damaged myself. Um, you know, I wish I could unplug this and go to a place away from this crying baby because I, baby, crying babies get on my last nerves. So getting back to my experience at the uh, America First Unity Rally, I had a really amazing opportunity come my way. I'd been there about an uh, hour, hour and a half when one of the organizers told me that they were going to have a fashion show and would I like to be one of the models. My eyes got real big and I thought, wow, you're picking me to do this. While I have done some modeling before when I lived in Los Angeles, I only did runway a few times and those were for camera show swap meets. And those are not the same thing as when you're modeling for a designer. Oh good, she's going to take the baby away. You know, this is really getting hard. A person's trying to film here and this baby's crying, please. Oh my God. Okay. So anyway, I apologize for this. I, this is really distracting me. Good, she's going. I can't stand crying babies. I don't care if I sound cold hearted. I just don't like it. I don't think if you're a parent watching this, if your child cries, take them out of the library, please. Now, hold on a second. I got to pick up some things I dropped. Uh, yeah, that gets on my last damn nerve. You know, my mother, when I was little, if I acted up and she said I really didn't, she would take me immediately out of places so that I wouldn't disrupt other people. But at least I get, I got to give that mama credit for something. At least she did take her child out of this library. In Atlantic City, parents have children, and they act up, and they scream, and they think that everybody, oh, because I love my baby, everybody's got to love my baby, and they just stay put, and they let their child be disruptive. They tolerate talking. They tolerate all kinds of disruptive behavior in the Atlantic City Free Public Library. So I, I'm so glad I have a computer now so I don't have to put up with their crap. Anyway getting back to my experience in Washington DC at the America First Unity Rally. I was invited to participate in a fashion show by the designer Andre Soriano. He, I knew he looked familiar unless I'm confusing him with somebody else. He had a featured part on a TV series called Ugly Betty. And he also made frequent guest appearances on America's Next Top Model. So to be asked to be in a fashion show with this man who I seen on TV and admired for his big out personality. He just had a personality that didn't quit. I don't want to give descriptions that may or may not really be accurate, but I will say that I was over the moon to be able to do this. He had a red, white, and blue patriotic fashion show, and this was the first time that they ever had a fashion show at a Trump rally. So to be invited to be one of the models for this was a high honor because there was all the people that were on this fashion show, really good looking people. And uh, to be asked to be a part of that just made my day, it really did. Now, because I was, of course, filming for my channel, I had my computer set up. I balanced it on one of my purses so that it would have some height, and I made sure to get the stage area within the frame so I could film. And there was a little old lady sitting on a beach chair near my computer, so I mentioned to her that my computer was set up and filming. Could she please watch it and make sure that nobody touched it or kicked it over or stood in front of it so that I could be seen because obviously if I'm doing runway I can't go off stage to fiddle with my computer and then come back you can't do anything so uh, when I finally reviewed the footage well first of all somebody kicked the computer over at one point and I was actually really fucking angry about that and I wanted to I wanted people to tell me who it was that did it I wanted to confront the bitch that did it but while they saw it being done they couldn't tell me exactly who did it and 
since I didn't know exactly who did it, there was nothing I could do about it. Now, obviously, since I'm filming right now, the computer was not damaged. So that said, I couldn't use the footage I shot, partly because there were two speakers before they even got to the fashion show. Then they played two songs before the fashion show. And of course, if you know anything about being on YouTube, you cannot have music in it that you don't own the copyrights to. You can get a copyright strike. And if you get three such copyright strikes, you stand to lose your channel completely. And that's the last thing I want to do. So they played two songs before this fashion show started. And then when they were getting ready to do the fashion show, they encouraged people to come close to the stage. And so three or four people were standing right in front of the computer. So when I re reviewed the footage, you just saw these legs and these people standing in the way. And you only saw brief glimpses of me going back and going fo and forth. And there was no way. And then after the fashion show was over, they had the finale. They had this lady wearing this beautiful wedding dress. It was the uh, like a mermaid style that's close to the body, went in and went got tight at the ankles. And then it flared out. And where it flared out, it said Trump. It was so awesome. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, the, the man that did this fashion show is the same man that designed Joy Villa's dress that she wore at the Academy Awards a few years ago. The Trump dress that everybody just went, was amazed over. Um, this guy, he was here with his mother and she spoke. They talked a little bit about how she wanted to be an American citizen so badly so that she came here legally and brought him legally here so he was able to be here and have a better life than where they came from. And he is so grateful and she's so grateful to be American citizens and they both love our president and he is one hell of a designer. This red, white, and blue collection, um, they had swimwear for the men and it was like a, a denim kind of a blue color very nice shape and uh nice shape on the guys too I, you know everybody looked good even and he designs for all shapes and sizes and no matter what kind of body the chicks had they all looked fantastic um and some of the girls had better bodies than me so i had a little bit of figure envy on that um, one thing, I didn't have a decent pair of shoes to change into, so I actually had to wear the same uh, sandals that I've been wearing. I do have one other pair of shoes with me. I have a pair of leopard flats, but of course I didn't bring them with me there in my friend's apartment. So I had to wear the shoes that I was wearing. But other than that, they didn't make an issue of it. Uh, but when I reviewed my footage afterwards, I realized that, that I couldn't use any of it, at least nothing from that segment. First of all, the two people that were speaking before the fashion show, I don't know. It's not that I couldn't relate to them because I, I don't want to say that, but it just, I don't know that it would have been that interesting for my channel. Again, that's maybe a judgment that I'm not qualified to make, but I would like to think that my channel involves stuff that I put out that I relate to and that I care about and not that I don't care about the people but it just I don't know it didn't they weren't things that I thought my audience would really be interested in or maybe only such a small segment of my audience would dig it so it probably didn't belong and I would have liked to have taken that footage off first and actually just had a fashion show so unless I happen to get footage of only the fashion show and I could somehow put that on my channel so I made an appeal to Facebook and I'm going to do this on other social media and I'm going to see if I can get uh, footage of the fashion show that I can put on my channel and if I can I will post it because I would love you guys to see it because the last time I did runway was when I lived in Los Angeles and I believe it was 1999 or the year 2000 when I did the camera show swap meets. It was it was a it was a year two thousand. Uh, that was very that was kind of a very exciting year because they built the Kodak Theater and the Hollywood Highland Project, and that's what caused the rents to go through the roof in Los Angeles. And then, of course, the following year was nine eleven, and 
now that California as a whole is very hard to afford there. So back to Saturday, after the uh, fashion show, that was close to the end of the rally. And then I, when I found that there was free Wi-Fi signals on the benches in the area of the mall near where I was, we were all supposed to go to Harry's Bar afterwards. That's the ground floor of the Hotel Harrington. There's a restaurant and a bar. And I was all set on going there. That's usually the hangout after Trump rallies in Washington, D.C. The, the owner of the Hotel Harrington is a Trump supporter, and they encourage and celebrate us, and it's a safe spot for us to hang out and socialize and stuff. But part of the reason why I ultimately didn't go there, I walked as far as that place, but I didn't really have enough money to spend there. And frankly, if I'm going to spend money on food, I just assume it'd be Chinese food. Because to me, if you're going to spend money on food, it should be the, the food that you absolutely love. And not that their food's not good, but I kind of, my tastes run more to Asian food. And especially if I'm going to pay for it. And plus, I wanted to save some money so that I could buy some weed, since weed's legal here. And that is one thing that I think is a real important experience for me. Now, let me backtrack a little bit to the day before Friday. When I was here, I did have a tiny, tiny little bud of weed with me and I took it out when I got in to my friend's apartment. See, he was staffing the uh, peace vigil across from the White House and so he gave me one of his keys and he said just go get in and make yourself at home. I was really dog tired because I only had like two hours of sleep and he said you know turn the radio on whatever station you want, watch TV, do whatever. So I'm flipping through radio stations because I want to get to know Washington, D.C. radio. So far, my, my favorite radio station is a classical music station. And I'm looking at the notebook that I have just for things like local radio stations. I wanted to give you guys some recommendations. If you love classical music, the classical station is on 90.9 FM. I discovered the most kick-ass classic rock station. If you're a rocker like I am, there's a radio station they call the Big 100. The call letters numbers are 100.3 FM. Uh, and it's WBIG. And you can find them on WBIG.com. Well, on Friday nights between 10 and 11 o'clock, they have a radio program called Capital Offense. Or Capital Punishment, excuse me. And capital Punishment is classic hard rock, especially 70s and 80s. So, like, if you love 80s hair metal, oh, my God, this radio station. And even if it's not the Capital Punishment program, it is better than any radio stations in Atlantic City or southern New Jersey. It's better than the radio stations in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and they had some great classic rock stations, especially when I would still go to visit my grandparents, who are both gone now. Um, i tempted to say this radio station may even be better than the mighty KNAC of, that was in Los Angeles. It was 105.5 on your dial, which I believe is probably internet only now, but you know what, I haven't even checked recently. And the last time I was in Los Angeles was in 2006. I'm pretty sure it wasn't in existence there. But if you like classic rock, classic hard rock, the Big 100 is amazing. I friended them on Facebook even. I told them how they rocked my socks. And I had, I didn't mention this, but I had the sublime experience of crumbling up this bud of amazing weed, chronic, sticky, skunky, fragrant weed, crumbled it up, added a drop of water to it to increase the potency and make it burn slower, and I had a little pipe with me, and I smoked just one little hit, and I cranked up the radio, but not too loud because there are our neighbors, and there is nothing like good bud and good music and feeling that you could just totally relax and enjoy yourself. 
And one of my goals in this Washington, D.C. trip was definitely to explore the radio stations. And I love, love, love Big 100. Now, last time I was here and the time before that, I played a lot of the classical music station. I love classical music. Classical music to me makes me feel more intelligent. It's like a palate cleanser. It makes me feel refreshed. It makes me feel renewed. I wish when in my ghetto neighborhood that people would, instead of blasting that infernal, fernal, disgusting, angry, misogynistic hip hop crap, I wish that they would blast classical music. I don't think I've ever experienced anybody with a fancy car stereo system blasting Beethoven or Brahms or Tchaikovsky or Mozart. They play that rap crap, that obnoxious, nasty, ghetto music that I'm sorry, not sorry, I don't relate to, I don't like, with very few exceptions. Like the, maybe the very early music that was funny and clever and not X-rated and not woman-hating and not white-hating. Is it a crime to want things that you personally relate to? That's, I love classical music. I've loved it since I was a little girl in second grade playing elementary orchestra violin. I just, I love classical music. I love it when waiting areas and bus terminals play classical music. And if classical music's your bag, by the way, Port Authority Bus Terminal in New York City, they play classical music 24 seven. I think it's to discourage homeless from hanging out in the bus waiting areas. And why they think classical music would drive people out, I would think rap music would drive people out. But obviously it has millions of fans, so it doesn't drive people out. It drives this bird away, let me tell you. To me, hip-hop music is worse than screaming babies. It's like it's, it seems to scream, get away, you're not wanted. And I have little use for it. So, so I hope that this is going to end up being good video. It's going to be a little rambly because I only put a few notes in there. Um, so yesterday when I was walking around, Okay, this today is Monday. Yesterday was Sunday. Um, yesterday I was in DuPont Circle and I had the really cool experience of feeding a squirrel out of my hand. I'll set up the story for you. Coming out here, I brought some food with me, partly so that I wouldn't use my friend's food that I'm staying with and partly so that I, I might wanted to snack on something. So I, I have some shelled walnuts in a bag. I brought a, a big bag with me and I put some in one of those plastic bags. When you're riding Greyhound, they have a receptacle of bags at each seat so that you have something to throw your trash in. And these bags are about, about I don't know, say eight inches across and a foot deep or maybe a little smaller than that. So I have some walnuts in my bag. And I'm seeing little birdies and squirrels, and they're just the most adorable creatures. They're fuzzy, and they got big eyes, and I'm a sucker for a pretty face, okay? And they remind me of cats, in a way. So I was throwing nuts to them, getting closer and closer, and even getting on my foot and stuff, and giving me the, and the big, dark eyes. And I just, I wanted to pet it so bad, but I don't want rabies or bugs or anything. And I even asked my friend, I said, do you think it would be too much of a risk to eat out of my hand and he thought it would be but I said you know what I'm gonna do it anyway if I get rabies you'll know where the hospital is and I haven't even had a tetanus shot in 10 years so because healthcare is not apparently a human right when you're an American citizen in New Jersey <clears throat> so I put a few nuts in my hand and I put my hand out flat because you got to put your flatten your hand up because even a cat's will bite if you feed them out of your hand, at least my darlings do. So I put my hand out and this squirrel ate out of my hand. It was the most precious thing. I never had a squirrel eat from my hand before. I fed pigeons peanuts before out of my hand, but never a squirrel. And I do have photographic proof of it. And I did post it on my Facebook page. So yeah, I that, that squirrel feeding was absolutely sublime. So last night, uh, 
my friend had a couple of friends over and one of them and I, I'm not going to give any names or anything. She knows that I love weed. And I told her that one of my goals here was to acquire myself some legal cannabis and smoke. And I noticed that if I smoke in public, even if it is legal, I don't get high nearly as well as I do when I'm indoors someplace. And especially if you're indoors someplace, air conditioning feels so luxurious, you know. And maybe you guys are laughing at me because you're used to air conditioning and to you that's no big thing. Maybe you think the air conditioning is a just further evidence of being civilized. So maybe I'm not civilized enough because I don't have air conditioning. Well, guess what? When you're not used to it and you get to be around it, it feels really great. So sometime today, I'm going to get some weed. And so I'm going to have weed for my time here. And that really i'm really stoked about that even though i had to put some money down and i came with very little money this time this time i came with less money than i ever did in washington dc and of course that just means i'm going to have to do without uh, one, one thing i'm bummed out about is i am um i guess people are talking next to me when uh, the, the circulator buses that have been free starting tomorrow they're going to be charging a buck for them i was really hoping they would stay free because free means i have access to it if i only have a few bucks left i i think i only have ten dollars cash on me now so and that's going to have to last me the rest of the time i'm here i don't dare put anything on a credit card because i'm the kind of person believes that you don't put anything on a credit card unless you know that you can pay it off by the end of the month so that way you don't get a service charge and I am a kind of person I have a budget I stick to it no exceptions I mean okay you know what exception I would make if it involved health care for one of my cats or if they desperately needed cat food and none of my human food was safe for them that's the only time that I would break my own rule other than that I keep to a budget I stick to it I've been told that I am so frugal that if I squeeze a buffalo it passes gas only people of a certain age would even get that reference, but I am very, very cheap, and I'm not ashamed of it. And being frugal is a definite life skill that will do you well in life, because you never know what situation are in life. Even if you think that you have a comfortable, steady job and a comfortable place to live, fortunes do change. And if you know how to make money last, it's a very valuable survival skill. And I really recommend that you guys watching me invest in financial literacy and even watch my videos because I love to share my skills and my experiences in saving money and I do have a video plan coming up talking about how I have been forced to economize especially when I dropped my computer and different things happened like my skincare running out and stuff I had to do without some things and I had to do some workarounds to carry on my lifestyle as much as possible without spending money so expect uh, video content about that from me it's I don't know how long it's going to be raining today I know that in around dinner time I'm going to be eating at a place called Miriam's kitchen I'm not going to tell say too much about that because if you're curious enough you can do is research for yourself and you can find out about it but uh, let's just say Washington DC is a place that you have to be a total idiot to starve and that said what's up with people who are begging for money and when you tell them where that you can get free food they give you a hard time they give you excuses and things first of all if you have a lick of intelligence why would you spend money unnecessarily on food when you know that you can get it for free People are not logical. And that just tells me one thing, that maybe it's not food that you really want. Maybe you just want money for other things like drugs and alcohol. I would rather a person just be upfront. And assuming I had the money to give, why don't you say, hey, I'd like to get a beer or I'd like to get some pot. If I was flush, I've been known to give money to people before. This week isn't the week probably not this month maybe not this year but be up front but if I know it's for alcohol because I have a very dim view of alcohol 
because I know how alcohol damaged me. I would not subsidize that. I would not subsidize tobacco either because that's very addictive. And I, plus you have undercovers that are disguised as teenagers that try to trap people into contributing to the delinquency of minors. So definitely don't do that. That's morally wrong. Um, I would like to find more Trump related events while I'm here. I'm not sure exactly how long I'm going to be here. I can't take advantage of my friend's hospitality and I certainly don't want to do anything to jeopardize their housing. That's one thing that they made abundantly clear. He has a number of friends and he's a very generous person and he even told them that they were welcome to stay on his couch or pull out the futon when they were in town. But you don't take advantage of people's kindness and you certainly don't do anything to jeopardize their own housing. That is, I'm sure that violates the hobo code of ethics. And there is such a thing as a hobo code of ethics. Do your research and you'll find out about that. I think that would be another subject for a video at some time. And the, the reason why I would like to do a subject, a, a video about that is because my mom told stories about how her grandmother used to entertain hobos. Bums would literally come to their house because there is a thing called hobo signs and they would visit and they would tell stories. And when I found that out, that really warmed my heart and it kind of made me realize maybe why I was a little bit drawn to hobos and certainly the experiences I had living floor to floor and couch touring. I, I don't like to use the word homeless because it does have a stigma and it does make many people think less of you. I get the feeling that most of us humans, we're one personal disclosure away from being shunned by people. Because there's always that one thing that'll make a person lose respect for you and you don't always know what it is. So that's, I think, why people can be reluctant to let people get to know them. Because we have this fear that I'm going to say that one thing that's going to make you reject me and clo you're going to close off and not hear a thing that, more that I say. Maybe it's because I wear a MAGA hat. Maybe it's because I'm the wrong religion or lack of religion. Or maybe you just think I look funny or you don't like the way I dress. Whatever that is. People have a fear of rejection and they don't want to stick their neck out and be vulnerable and let that happen. I totally understand that. So, getting back to Washington, D.C. Um, oh yeah, there's going to be a Trump rally October 17th, and I know I can't stay that long. And so, unfortunately, I'm going to have to miss it. So, I really would like to make more friends out here so that I have more places to stay so that, for instance, I can come even more frequently and I could stay with another friend and that way not get my friends in trouble. Now, I, I know I'm going out of order here, but I really do have to talk about something. Not too many disturbing things happen to me in Washington, D.C., but I am going to mention something. My friend gave me one of his keys, the key for to get in his apartment door, but not the key to get in the building. There's like a special buzzer thingy. It's like an electronic eye thingy or RFID chip. I don't know what it is. But anyway, he said, just wait outside and somebody will let you in either who's leaving the apartment or who's coming in. So one night, uh, it was not last night. Uh, yeah, it was last, was it last night? Yeah, it was last night. I came in after the Saturday night. Was it sa yeah, it was Saturday night. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm so brain dead. I, I really should have organized my thoughts better. But that, that, that crying baby totally distracted me. I was totally pissed off. If I wasn't plugged in here, I was really trying to get away from that kid. So I'm waiting at the steps to be let in. And I noticed this group of four people. They were young white people. So I couldn't imagine that I was intimidating to them in any way. Unless, of course, they didn't like my MAGA hat and my MAGA shirt. And I'm waiting and waiting and waiting, and they're talking amongst themselves. And finally, after what seemed like about a half hour, they came up to the door. And there was three girls and a guy. And the women went in, went, went in first, and the man closed the door. And as I approached the door, and I got my hand close to the door, he pulled the door closed. I almost got my finger caught in. And if I got my finger caught in, it would have broken off. And he said, no, as he did it. And I'm thinking, what a fucking asshole. 
and it really hurt my feelings. I almost felt like crying, but crying doesn't do you any good. Praying doesn't do you any good because there's no God, right? And I couldn't, I could see the window where my friend's apartment was, but I didn't want to yell too loudly. I did yell up a few times, but there is a restaurant or a gay club or something with seating downstairs, and I didn't want to draw attention to myself by yelling. And plus, I know that when people are yelling up windows, it distracts and bothers other people. Because I know I don't appreciate it when I hear people doing it where I live. So I yelled his name a few times, and of course he didn't hear. Fortunately, somebody finally was coming up to the apartment building, and they did let me in. And I was, of course, very grateful. But I still kind of shook up about how the fact that there's some asshole guy in my friend's apartment who doesn't like me for no good reason because he doesn't even know me. I mean, I can totally understand being reluctant to let people you don't know in buildings. I do it all the time, not letting people in I don't know. However, if somebody asks me nicely and if I make the, ju the determination that they're not a troublemaker, I would do the right thing. I've let people in my ghetto building who I didn't know who were, they said that uh, they gave me some explanation. One was an obvious schoolgirl that wanted to be let in. What am I going to do? Let a little girl stand outside in a dangerous ghetto neighborhood? I'm not an asshole unless I'm absolutely provoked. Why would I do that? So the idea that there's some young white guy that won't let me in the building even though I have authorization to go in there and that makes me think that every time that I have the key and I want to come and go when I'm not with my friend am I going to run into something like this again does this mean I have to stick with glue to my friend in order to make sure that I don't get locked out what am I what do is there a chance that I'm going to have to go find a park bench and sleep on it because I might not be able to get in his building because I don't have a cell phone. I can't call a guy. My, if I'm carrying my computer around, which I probably am, there's a good chance that it's not even powered up, so I can't even get on Facebook and send him an instant message saying, I'm outside your apartment. and I, Could you let me in, please? And my friend has a life. He has things to do. He doesn't have time to babysit me. He's older than me, so he's even more of an adult, right? So I can't expect to be handheld and babysat and all this hippie horse shit. So, and there are lots of Trump haters in Washington, D.C. Now, today, while I was busy getting lost on my way to this library, one of the things that I did was there's a whole lot of Trump hating stickers, and I used a pen. Or a fingernail edge and I peeled off and threw away the stickers that I could find because it felt good to do so. Um, supposedly 12 noon and it's now two minutes after 12 my friend's supposed to meet me here. I don't know exactly where the day is going to take me except for I'm supposed to get weed and I know I'm going to get my belly full of food. Oh yeah I ate at a church yesterday. I was there once before. I believe it's called Georgetown Presbyterian. And I had the most amazing meal yesterday. Uh, I had two kinds of chicken. I had fried chicken that was so good. I put some Frank's Red Hot sauce on it and salt on either side. They had lemon chicken. They had pork chops. They had uh, those red skin, thin skin, bliss potatoes. They had sweet potatoes. They had salad, and I had Italian dressing on it. Am I making you hungry yet? And this is what I ate. There is more than that, but there are certain things I don't eat, like anything with cheese on it, I don't eat. So anything with cheese, I didn't have. But they also served seconds. And they had coffee mugs with the Georgetown Presbyterian signia on it, and they said that they were free and you could take one. And I'm all about my souvenirs, so I took one. But what a nice place. Uh, you sit in a real fancy dining room with chandeliers and everything. This looked totally like a high-end restaurant setting. And the people serving there were volunteers. I guess every week they have volunteers from a different church, including lots of children. And whenever you see children doing volunteer work, it gives me hope for the future because obviously they're being raised with good values 
and good children aren't created by accident. They are nurtured by good people that give good example, and that's how good kids become good men and women. Um, now, let me, I, I keep on going ahead of myself. I know I'm rambling and I'm confusing you, but I want to go back to the events of Saturday. Before the America First Unity uh, rally, there was the Trump march, uh, marching from the Trump International Hotel to the White House. And it was organized by a group called Oregon Women for Trump. And one of the things that I noticed when I was making my way to Trump International Hotel for my friend's apartment was there was a big rally on Freedom Plaza. Apparently, Saturday was also National Transgender Day of Visibility or something like that. Now, I have absolutely no problem with people in the LGBTQ community. That, why would I have any problems with them? However, one of the problems I have is when a movement seems to be 95% Democrat and there's a lot of anti-Trump crap. To me, if you're right away calling yourself, declaring yourself my enemy because you hate the person who I enthusiastically support, even though Donald Trump has done more for LGBT rights worldwide. If you heard his speech at the United Nations last week, he specifically advocated the rights of gays, lesbians, bisexuals, and transgendered people worldwide, that they had a right to life and to freedom, and they were not supposed to be oppressed. And yet, so many people in the community hate him. And so I heard some mentions of Trump in a derogatory fashion when I passed Freedom Plaza. And then while I was standing on Pennsylvania Avenue in front of Trump's hotel, the transgender uh, contingent marched down Pennsylvania Avenue and then they started this fuck Trump chant and I had big old drag queens get within feet of me and give me the middle finger and the thing is before they lost me when they did the fuck Trump chant before they started dissing Trump I was applauding them I have transgender friends I've had transgender friends since when I lived in San Francisco I have my own connection to the LGBTQ community, and I love them just like I love any group. People can be in lots of different scenes. If you are a woke person, or and I'm not a social justice warrior or anything, but there is this concept called intersectionality, which means you can be in lots of different scenes. So do they think that there are no Trump supporters, no Republicans among their ranks? Don't they realize that they are alienating Trump supporters who also happen to be in their community? For a community that is all about getting out of the closet, how do they think it's okay that people who are Republicans and who are Trump supporters are supposed to keep their political feelings in the closet? Does this not seem hypocritical to you? This is part of my problem with the left. The left will only accept you if you believe in everything hook, line, and sinker, and you toe the party line. But if you veer in any way from anything that they're about, they shun you. They will have nothing to do with you. I was so bummed out at the attitude of these marchers. I can't tell you the last time I ever saw so many people, and there was a lot of them. I don't want to estimate how many people there were. It had to be over a thousand people. And I felt so much negativity and so much hatred from them just because I was wearing a MAGA hat and a Trump shirt and I had a big old Trump banner that said Trump 2020, keep America great, no more bullshit. And I was made to feel that I was the enemy. I was made to feel that I and people like myself are their oppressors. They, I had no opportunity to have dialogue with them. I would have so welcomed individuals to come up to me and find out what I was about. If they would have only done that, they would have found out just how much I had in common with them. I have a story to tell. I'm not going to tell it here. I don't know if I ever really will. But there was no need for them to be so mean. My open letter to them would be, 
have dialogue with people. Don't assume that just because somebody belongs to or espouses a certain political ideology, it does not mean they're your enemy. Maybe they're your ally. Maybe they might even be in your community, but they just vote for somebody else. It's like people that are arguing about what seat they're going to be on when they're in a plane or on a bus. When everybody's going to the same place. If everybody's going to the same place, does it matter where the hell you're sitting? I am fully capable of having friends of all kinds of political ideologies, all kinds of religions or lack of. I'm not going to hate on you just because of who you vote for. I'm not going to be the one to reject a friendship just because you're a Democrat or you're, even if you're a socialist. I might think that your ideology is idiotic. I may think that you are, especially if you're a young person, I may think that the only reason why you believe in, and or vote a certain way is because you are inexperienced or because you only associate with people who share the same viewpoint as you which I noticed with a lot of my real life friends, especially my California friends, most of them, they just parrot how each other thinks. There's very little independent thought and a few Republicans who I have been friends with, at least until Trump in this great movement of Trump supporters who we are not typical Republicans. We're not typical anything really. There's so much diversity within the Trump fan movement. It's really mind blowing, but I don't understand why, if I am capable of being friends with anybody, as long as you're not an animal torturer or something, I have no problems with, and I will not judge you based on who you vote for. Now, if all you do is complain about how the person I vote for is the enemy, and all you do is bellyache about how much Republicans suck and how much Trump sucks, then yes, maybe I won't want to read that anymore. I have relatives on Facebook. I've only been on Facebook not even two years. I'm sure that my real life family has me on ignore because they tend to be Democrats and they post every other thing is anti-Trump. Even though whenever they post pro-abortion stuff, I always love their posts. I'm a pro-choice person. I'm a feminist. To me, feminism is not a dirty word. That said, I'm not woke. I'm proudly not woke. I'm not politically correct. I'm not going to pander to identity politics or race baiting or that such thing but I don't understand how groups of people can just reject you just on politics and I know I've discussed this in other videos so yeah when those people were so mean to us and the thing is when I got to the uh, Trump uh, to the America First unity rally there were LGBT people there there were all kinds of people there um, I'm pretty sure the designer was gay. At least he had a t-shirt that said, Make America Gay Again. And he was fantastic. And he and I had a discussion after the fashion show. He even gave me his business card. I don't know that he gave anybody else his business card. I was really thrilled. I'm not six feet tall. I'm not 16. However, I do have some modeling experience. And the fact that I got to be in that fashion show, I'm still very honored and blown away by that. But yeah how we were treated by the people at that march uh, that was really to see so many people that basically declared themselves to be my enemy that I'm the enemy and my fellow Trump supporters are their enemies and we're not I'm not which is not to say that maybe some a large amount or I don't know what the percentage of people who love Trump maybe feel uncomfortable with trans people and I and I don't think that's right either but we don't all we aren't all uptight like that. We're not all haters. Get to know us before you assume that we don't like you and we don't trust you or whatever. Because only by having dialogue with people will you know that maybe we can be your friends. So that said, I'm still here in Washington, D.C. I would like to be here at least a week. I don't want to make assumptions, um, but I wish I could be here for the October 17th rally. I'm sure I can't be. Um, I'm here to make friends, I'm here to network, um, I'm here to make videos, I'm here to be inspired, I'm here to take pictures, uh, hopefully I'll get to know how to operate my little digital camera and my camcorder. I haven't even had time to really look at the instruction manual since I've been here, but I'm definitely here to smoke weed. I'd like to go to some more 12-step meetings, and I guess I'm going to have to 
hide my pot leaves, but I guess I can't wear my MAGA hats because that's frowned upon in those establishments. Well, now I know. But, oh yeah, another thing that Washington, D.C. is really great for, they have so many newspapers and magazines that are free. That's the great thing about big cities. This here is a couple of pounds worth of papers and magazines. And so every time I leave Washington, D.C., I always leave with a separate bag full of reading materials. I haven't finished the reading materials that I brought from the last time I was here. So, yeah, I'm, I'm having such a wonderful time here. I wish you could be here. This is, we're having record-breaking warm weather. They said this is like the 61st day of summer-like weather here. I just, I really lucked out. I only brought one long sleeve thing and I did bring my purple hoodie sweater, which carrying my computer here, I actually have that wrapped around my computer so that the computer wouldn't get wet. So far, so good. But this, I can't say enough about how much I love Washington, D.C. It's just amazing place. If you're an architecture freak, if you love the federal government and you love history and you love the USA and you love the president, See, that was why I always loved Washington, D.C. I started coming here, reg I don't want to say regular, but I, I was here for George W. Bush's second inauguration. And But each time that I come here, I get to know the area better. I, I don't like it as much in the wintertime just because it's so uncomfortable physically to hang out. And I like places that are comfortable enough to hang out outside. Uh, Washington, D.C. seems to treat its homeless people very well. It seems to have programs that, that can and do get people off the streets. It's gotten my friends off the street. Uh, so Washington, D.C., the resources are really wonderful. There's so much to see and do here. They have has It's full of delightful neighborhoods. Cannabis is legal there. That is such a big draw. The idea that I can sit down in most parks, but not federal property, you can get fuck with I don't know what the ticketing is if you're caught on quote unquote federal property and unfortunately some of the coolest places are federal property that said there are tips and tricks to inhaling on federal property that I have done it usually includes hiding behind a big statue but do be aware of Secret Service they have binoculars and they can watch you from afar so don't take your chances but still if you like cannabis, there are stores that you can buy it at now. Or you can order from a friend, which is what I did last night. So sometime this afternoon, I'm going to have some weed. Nah, 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 nah. Greetings from Washington, D.C. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, if you watch the whole thing, feel free to give it a thumbs up. Now, if you think it sucks, give it a thumbs down. YouTube doesn't care either way. If you are new to my channel and you would like to see more of me, please ring that, you know, subscribe to me and ring that bell. And when it looks like it's got the shaky, shaky thing, that means you'll get notified when I make my new, my next video. Uh, I've committed to a schedule, posting schedule of Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Sometime during the day, unless I have a computer problem, like breaking computers, then in which case I might not be able to film. But since I have a computer again, I am back to filming and I'm so glad to be back with you and share my exciting, wonderful life with you. You're watching me. I consider you my friend who I, I maybe haven't met yet. So until next time, stay tuned. I love you. and I love Washington and I love the USA. Talk to you soon. Bye.